Okay, it's just as well that we're doing this one, which should be organic 27C Blake remotely. Because I want to show you this reaction, and there is the possibility, I suppose, that if something went drastically wrong, we would create hexavalent chromium. This is chromium ion with a six positive charge, which is highly toxic. So, we're going to do this with those students in the room just as well. Now, here is the problem as it is presented in the book. And this is problem number 23. This is in the presence of an acid. It's an acid environment, in an acid environment. Okay, which means that when we go to balance this redox reaction, we can add hydrogen ions to one side and water to the other to make it work. So, you could make this work by putting in any spectator ions you needed to to make this work. Would this work with potassium chromate and potassium iodide? Yes. So some things that I want to point out from a chemistry perspective. I don't want there to be any interactions that I don't want. For example, last week, after the Christmas break, I came in during the, I don't know, Saturday or whatever it was after school, whatever days it was, probably the next day, probably Wednesday, and washed out my glassware like I normally did. The monkey never learns, because I'm sitting there with an acid bath. One of the, the test tubes that I had in there from a while back, when I put it in there, it hit that acid, and it did a redox reaction, and it made iodine. Not chlorine gas, thankfully, this time. But I could see brown stuff whoosh, moving through the solution. And I could smell iodine, so I knew I had made iodine in a redox reaction somehow, just by stuff mixing together. Didn't realize I had a, you know, a problem. I don't know what I had, how, where I had iodine in there, but somehow iodine got in there and did a redox. You don't want those surprise reactions happening. So I want both of these front. I mean, I could have ammonium dichromate. I've got more ammonium dichromate here than I do potassium dichromate. Looks the same. So it would do this. But I don't want my ammonium ion in there with some complex water chemistry going on. I have another redox reaction I don't know about producing ammonium, ammonia gas or something which that alone wouldn't be critical, but what if it, what if it made a ammonium triiodide, you know, a contact explosive? So I want these two ions to be the same. So I picked potassium iodide and potassium chromium. Um, so to eliminate that problem. So I'm gonna dissolve both of those in water. Here I have my potassium dichromate, nice yellow color, about like tang. And we'll put water in there. And if this stuff doesn't dissolve that good, maybe it's because it's not. Yeah, I should have goggles on. But I already did this. I know it's safe to do. Okay. So I'm going to leave that sit there and dissolve. And it, it kind of looks like tang when it's dissolved. And my potassium iodide, bought some new this year because it was out. We use a little bit more of it. I want it to be my excess reagent. Put some water in with it. I know it dissolves a little better, so got the gave the other one a head start. And we should see some color change. That got cold. That's potassium iodide is really to dissolve has a high heat of solution so that got cold. So this is dissolved pretty much already. I'll put my stir it a little bit with this, squirting it in and out. And I'll do that again before I start. We gotta get our potassium chromate going here.
Now, this gets more and more yellow. So I have dichrome, potassium dichromate. The ions are splitting apart, being carried apart by the water. We're almost there. Feels like it's a little bit endothermic also. Okay, so I'm gonna put some of this in there. The ion, this is a very orange ion. Iodide ion is clear. We see that over here. It was clear solution. The chromium three plus ion, chromium three ion, is a pretty green color. And then we produce iodine, which is kind of that purpley color. So I'm gonna put some of this in there, and what will we see? It's doing a very, oh, I know what, I forgot to put my acid in there. I have to put my acid in there. This won't go without acid. I was like, why is it this doing what I want? Oh, there we go. See that turning brown? Deep blood red color brown? They need my HCL. Well, this isn't green at all. Where's my green? Well, what you're seeing is an overwhelming amount of iodine. Billions upon billions of crystals of solid iodine in there. So we're gonna leave those set. Here's one that set I did earlier. I can see kind of iodine settle into the bottom and see if we get any green out of that. I don't think we will. I don't think it will ever look green like so. Just to make sure I put my excess reactant in there. there. So that's what that looks like. Color change. A lot of times when you do a redox reaction, you get a color change. Let's balance it. So first you write, so that I just put this example in. This was a part of the book. This could, this could have been ammonium dichrome. So I took my spectator ions out, just wrote the unbalanced net ionic equation. It was dichromate ion plus iodide ion gives you chromium three positive ion, which you can't see because all you're seeing is I2. I'll find a way to get that out of there to see it. So then when you write the reactions, split that apart, and write it as an oxidation and a reduction. You have iodide ion giving up electrons and become an iodine with the zero oxidation number. The oxidation numbers are key to figure out how many electrons you need. Iodide ion is minus one. I have to give away, I have to have two of these to give away two electrons. Okay. I'm going to worry about balance now in the next step, I guess. This is going to be reduced by gaining electrons. You're going to have Cr207 at positive 6 apiece. We're going to make chrom chromium 3 positive ions at positive 3 apiece. You have to gain 3 electrons to do that. Now, We are in an acidic environment, which I forgot. So we can add water and we can add hydrogen ions. So now I have two iodide ions giving me I2 and two electrons. And when I do my Cr207, I write two CRs because I have to balance my atoms, balance the atoms in the half reaction. Two CRs, and the only way to get oxygen over here is to have seven water added. Because I can add water and I can add hydrogen ions. That gives me seven times two hydrogen 
So they go over here as 14 H plus. And then the six electrons that I would have normally had because I have three for each one of these chromium. And there's two chromium ions. Okay. Now, what's the next thing? The next thing is we have to get the same number of electrons. So we can leave this equation as this, multiply everything by here by three. Do that. Pause. Try it. Turn it back on and see that you get this. Multiply this by three. Now we can add our equations. Six electrons cancels. And basically we'll have three items on the left and three on the right. We don't have water on both sides, so that's not gonna be reduced. We don't have hydrogen on both sides. This isn't gonna be reduced. So this is what we get. Now, we put our spectator ions back in. Put our state back in, solid, liquid, gas, aqueous, whatever, and do any further balancing that we need to do. Now, this time there were no spectator ions put back in because the problem didn't give us any. Um, but I used HCl. So if we go back to what I originally had, when I put this stuff together, I have potassium dichromate, potassium iodide, and water, which would have given me CrCl3 if we could isolate it, I2 if we could get that stuff out of there, and I'd end up with KCl in there that's dissolved also. Okay, in the next one, Problem 25 is in basic solution. Do I have time to do it? Sure. So since that is going to be in basic solution on problem 25, we can add hydroxide ions, OH minus, and water to balance that one. So this is the way it's given in the book, N2O gas, what's the name of that? Be either nitrogen one oxide or dinitrogen monoxide. Hypochlorite ion, this is the stuff that's in household bleach that makes household bleach bleach. When these react, and there's going to be other stuff in the water that they didn't include here, spectator ions. We get the nitrite ion, you should know the name of that guy, and the chloride ion. Okay, now we got to figure out which one's oxidized, which one's reduced. So write this and this in one equation, and this and this in another equation, and sort it out. Okay, we've got know how to do your oxidation numbers. Oxygen is usually minus two. That means these have to be plus one apiece. Over here we got negative two and negative two adding to negative one. So we gotta equal negative one, minus two, minus two, and something goes in there to give you negative one. I don't understand. What? Minus two, minus two gives you minus one. You can catch up with that. That's not hard. Has to be three positive, positive three. Now, once you do that, nitrogen is going from plus one to plus three. That means it gave away two electrons and it's oxidized. The hypochlorite ion has chlorine in there as one positive because we're going to end with a negative one charge. Oxygen is minus two. What minus two gives you minus one? plus one. That's chlorine's oxidation number here. It's going to chloride ion, which is negative one. So we are reduced because we're going to gain two electrons to change that oxidation number to negative one. What's next? 
Well, you can't just add those because we have to balance our atoms. So for example, I have two nitrogen and one. So we have to go in there and balance our atoms. Remember, we can add hydroxide ions and water because this is a basic environment. So if I go N2O and NO2, I need two nitrogen, so I have to have a two here. The problem is that gives me four oxygen and I had one. So if I can add hydroxide ions and water, the way I figured it, um, if I add OHs over here, I'll get more oxygens on this side. And I'll kick out O's with water, but I'm going to take some of my O's and stick them onto here. So I tried different numbers and ended up when I got to six of these, then I had three water and I had three extra oxygen wood on here. So I end up with seven oxygen and here I have four and three is seven. I also, if I did that, had six hydrogen and here I have three times two is six. So it was a little bit of figuring to get that right. Then I have six negatives here, two negatives here, so I have to have four extra electrons on this side. Over on the other side, I'm changing ClO minus to Cl minus. But I have to have OHs over here so that I can spread my oxygen out over here. So I tried two first, and that gave me two hydrogen and two oxygen. So that worked. And then my charges are one, two, three negatives, and a negative, so I have to have two negatives here. Now we're good. Now we have to add these. Well, if I double this whole equation, I'll have four electrons in either side. <coughs> <coughs> so do that. Now, I have some things that'll cancel. I have two waters and three. So two of those will cancel and I'll be left with water here. I have six hydroxides and four. Four of them will cancel, leaving two hydroxides here. When you add that up, do it, stop, check. Then you have 2OH minus N2O, two hypochlorite ions, and two nitrate, two nitrite ions, two chloride ions in water. Then goes back in the spectator ions, but we don't have any. They didn't tell us what they were, so they're probably something like sodium or potassium. And your state descriptions, which ones are gas, which ones are aqueous, etc., which ones are liquid, and two of a gas there. One more, I think. And this video was the C video. The next one should be the D video.